Good evening, everybody. Hello for the class on books and differential equations. So today we will move on to a slightly different setting, as I already told you by email. We will go to characteristic P. So what I want to be to do today are two things. First, uh, Herbert, I think this thing muted. But I unmute. I unmuted it, but now it works. Okay, thank you, Chiara. Okay, <coughs> welcome everybody again. Today, we will start our study of differential equations in characteristic P. So more specifically, what we want to do is we want to take a differential equation defined over the rational numbers or, or even over the integers, and then reduce it modulo P and then compare the solutions in characteristic zero with the solutions in characteristic p, looking at almost all primes. So usually you don't take all primes because some primes, which are called the bad primes, have a bad reduction, but almost all, which means all but a finitely many finite number of primes, will give you relevant information. So this technique of reduction modulo p in algebraic geometry, it's very frequent. For instance, to study Diophantine equations, you pass on to congruences, you solve the congruences, and then you try to pull back your solutions to the characteristic zero case. Now here for differential equations, things are <coughs> uh, rather more complicated because differentiation and characteristic P do not really fit nicely together. So what I plan to do today is, in the first half, I will give you kind of a program of what we will consider in the next two or three meetings. Uh, especially I want to talk about the Grotendieck P curvature conjecture. And, but this will be just a rough outline to, to give you a feeling. Technical details will come uh, next week and the week thereafter. And then in the second half today, I want to, to come back to what we did in the last weeks namely the construction of solutions using the normal form theorem. So we will formulate a normal form theorem for characteristic P. So this is work of Florian Thurmsen uh, for his master thesis. Things are more complicated than in characteristic zero, but also more interesting, okay? So we will see various phenomena and various very striking pathologies which we will try to understand. So that's the program of today. And let me just start by the first part. Let me call this characteristic P preview. So I'm not sure to what extent you are familiar with differential equations in characteristic P. So <clears throat> the setting, so at the beginning, I will look at differential equations in characteristic zero and reduce the modulo a prime number P. Later on, we will start directly over a field of prime characteristic and study them independently. But to motivate a little bit, let us take L in Q, X, so rational function. So <coughs> we don't take uh, power series coefficients at the moment. We even take polynomials or rational functions. Well, differential operator. So now here we have rational functions, but you could also take polynomials by multiplying with the denominator. So these polynomial coefficients. defined over Q, or again, multiplying with the denominators of the coefficients, you can put bring everything to Z, say L is even in Z polynomial X del. Okay? So <coughs> we will forget about logarithms at the moment. We will just look at power series solutions. So uh, look at 
Ly equals zero and solutions. So now let me put Q. Now here we will get the power series, but possibly we may have to take also rational exponents in our power series. So more generally, maybe we want to allow here a one over Q u in n. Okay? So this would be Puiseux series. That's not a big difference to have power series with exponents which are rational numbers, but the denominators of the exponents are always the same. Okay? So the denominators don't increase to infinity. Okay? So we look at these solutions. <coughs> now let p be a prime number. number and consider now ly equals zero mod p and I will either I will add mod p but you could also if you prefer you maybe you add an index here lpy so what does this mean you take all the coefficients of L, which are integers, and you just take the residue class modulo P. So this LP will then be in FP X depth. Okay. Now, if you reduce modulo P, many things can go to zero. Everything which is divisible by P can, will go to zero. So this LP might be quite degenerate. It could even be identically zero. So could be quite degenerate for certain P. But our feeling is that this degeneration, for instance, getting the zero operator will only happen for finitely many p, <clears throat> namely finitely many ones. Of course, as we have assumed that our coefficients of the del are polynomials, we only have finitely many constants in z. So if we take p sufficiently large, we hope to keep kind of information. For almost all p, lp should carry interesting information about p, about l itself. So that's the game. Okay. In particular. We will look at the solutions. <coughs> so, uh, the quality of the solutions of LPY equals zero may tell us something for everything. about the, equal, the quality of the solutions of Ly equals zero. So now you see uh, number theoretic uh, stuff is coming in because we do reduction modulo p. Okay. So the solutions of Lpy here will be power series over the finite field, okay? So here, I'm not sure if you can still read this. Does this work? Yeah. In F, F, P, X. So everything is just formal series because we have no notion of convergence. 
Now, one thing which has been around for 250 years is the question, so classical and intriguing question, when does Ly have algebraic solutions? When does Ly equals zero, now still in characteristic zero, have algebraic solutions? Okay. Now, what is an algebraic solutions, e.g., you could take x to the one half square root of x. Huh? So here this would correspond to a local exponent rho in q. Huh? For, for instance, of an, of an Euler equation, we will have this type of solutions. But we could also take uh, more complicated things. We could take 1 plus x. This is also an algebraic function. Or you could take differences, 1 plus x square root minus cubed root of 1 plus x square, and so on. Okay. So, of course, algebraicity does not necessarily mean that you have roots or linear combinations of roots. I will give the precise definition in a moment. But at least these are uh, typical examples, and something which is certainly not algebraic would be exp of x log of 1 plus x are transcendent. Okay. So the question proposed by Grotendieck, and I will be more precise a little bit later, was can you read off from the reduction model of P whether a linear ordinary differential equation with polynomial coefficients defined over Z has a basis of algebraic solutions? Okay. So here you could ask, does it have some algebraic solutions or even a basis? A basis. So all, all solutions should be algebraic. Okay. Now, algebraic power series, let me make a short sidestep about algebraic power series, which is a beautiful subject in its own. So let me start in characteristic zero, but actually you could take any field. So <clears throat> let me denote this by, so let k be a field. In characteristic zero, you may think of the rational numbers or of the complex numbers. And in characteristic p, just take an expansion of fp. So I will denote by this kind of bracket inside the k algebra the ring or the ring of algebraic power series, ring of algebraic power series. It is also called the Henselization of the, <clears throat> of the polynomial ring, but we don't need this at the moment. So what is an element here, h of x? So algebraic, it just means that over the polynomial ring, it satisfies the polynomial equation. So there exists a p x y in k x y, a non-zero polynomial. With p of x h of x identically zero. Okay. So you see that. Our examples from above are so these of the, the roots here, which we have here, 1 plus x, and this one will be algebraic power series. 
So the first example is the square root of x is algebraic, but it is not a power series. So sometimes we may allow, instead of taking here the usual power series, we could allow uh, rational exponents. So the definition is also valid for Puiseux series. In k x one over q. It's the same definition. Okay. So <clears throat> these algebraic power series they are really mysterious. Maybe maybe it's not even a good definition because they are really hard to put your hands on them, especially in characteristic zero. So one thing which is very striking is that this algebraicity condition is somewhat simpler in characteristic P than in characteristic zero. So I give you, maybe I can write it here, one more example just to show you that things can be very strange, you take h of x, sorry, equal, you take co uh, coefficients one, but here you take x to the two to the k, k equals zero to infinity. So from a power series, so this would be x plus x square plus x4 plus x8 x16 and so on. Okay? So that's what is called a lacunary series. You see the gaps between the monomials become larger and larger. Lacunary series. And now let's guess whether it is transcendent, which it means non-algebraic, or whether it is algebraic. So our mathematical feeling tells us that this is not algebraic. Then h of x is not algebraic, which means Transcendent, hence transcendent. But this is a little bit dangerous because I have to add something. If the characteristic of k is not two, if you take characteristic, the field of characteristic two, then it is algebraic exercise. characteristic 2, h of x is an algebraic series. It's not difficult to find the minimal polynomial. Okay. This, of course, the characteristic 2 corresponds to here, so this 2 to the k. So one has to take care when talking about algebraic series. We will look at algebraic series not as solutions of the minimal polynomial, but as a solution of a differential equation. So one thing which I will prove, or two things I will prove, maybe not next time, but in this course, are fact one, which is not very difficult to prove. Every h of x in Kx algebraic series satisfies a linear differential equation Ly equals zero. Now, the point is that the coefficients of L are polynomials with L in Kx 
Okay. This polynomial coefficients. So many people have proven this. Uh, among them Abel in 1827. Uh, it has been proven over and over again. So you can construct in an implicit way, not explicitly, from the minimal polynomial of H, you can construct a differential equation. So if you are curious, try it on your own. Try to prove this. It's amusing because it's not, it's not straightforward. You have, it's a little bit tricky. I will show you uh, next time or the time afterwards. No? So we end up here with the algebraic series inside the setting of polynomial coefficients. So this will now be uh, a standard hypothesis. Okay. We are very much on the algebraic side. So this is not very difficult to prove. Okay. Fact two, which is kind of surprising, which is the following. This is a theorem of Eisenstein. says the following, h of x now with rational coefficients, algebraic, and maybe we expand h of x in some ck x to the k, k from zero to infinity, then ck e cubed, then you can write ck as a fraction of integer numbers. And what Eisenstein observed without proving it, that the denominators of these rational numbers only involve finitely many prime numbers. So then there exists, I used already q, but I will use it again q equals pi 1, p1 up to p l, let's say, a product of primes, finite product of primes, such that these ck are integers up to dividing by a power of q. So there ck is in one q over k times f for all k. That's the famous theorem, or one of the famous theorems of Eisenstein. These coefficients are almost integers. Actually, if you multiply x with q, hence, that's a different way of formulating this condition. H of Q times X is a power series with integer coefficients. Integer coefficients. So I think this is surprising. Yeah? So it tells you that these denominators, they cannot increase too fast. Uh, it's just uh, powers of Q. In particular, we get, we are always, we are still in characteristic zero. In particular, <coughs> we get that exp of X is transcendent. because it has uh, all prime numbers in the denominators of the coefficients, okay? So if you want, I have, I have done this theorem of Eisenstein several times in courses. Uh, I'll be happy to show you the proof if you are interested. Maybe not now, but 
uh, next time, you can. I think it would be, it would be for you. It would be much more fun if you try first to prove these things on your own. And once you have tried a little bit, I will give you then the next time the proof. So exercise just to start with. Show that this is true for a special show the statement for the mth root of 1 plus x. Okay. That's a very elegant proof for the general case, but first try it here. Uh, and then let me know if you found something. So that's the theorem of Eisenstein. Now, we get an important consequence of this theorem, namely concerning reduction modulo p. Consequence, if we reduce an algebraic power series modulo p, yeah, except for a finite number of p's, we get something well defined. So for h x in q x, it's a reduction. This one doesn't work either. Reduction modulo p in now this would be then f p x is well defined for all primes which are do not appear in this q here. So hence for almost all primes. You agree? Okay. So now this gives us already the, the suggestion what Grothendieck formulated as a side remark. So this is now Grothendieck, and sometimes it's combined with Katz P curvature conjecture. So it seems that Grothendieck formulated this conjecture in a lecture where Katz was <coughs> present. And uh, it was Katz who popularized this conjecture. This was in the 1960s. And Katz proved uh, the most important case of it. And he also gave a more general version of the, theory of the conjecture. Up to now, this conjecture is still open. Okay. And it says the following. Uh, let L in Q, I directly take Qx del as before. <coughs> then Ly equals 0 as a basis of algebraic power series solutions. And maybe we allow again a rational exponent, so Puiseux series. I don't want to be too exact in this item. Though then Elva has a basis, and this basis will be over Q the Q basis of algebraic power series solutions, if and only if. Now, by the theorem of Eisenstein and the consequence, we can reduce modulo P and we can look at the reductions of the solutions for modulo P, which are well-defined now for almost all P, if and only if 
LPY equals zero as now we have to in characteristic P let me put this here in this box we have the derivative of XP is zero so whenever we multiply a solution with the power of X we get again a solution yeah so L y of x, let me write it like this to be more explicit, implies that L, we multiply by any power series, which is the power series in x to the p, g x to the p, times y of x is again zero. No? Because by the product rule, this g x to the p doesn't matter. So. Now we have to take as our field of constants power series in x to the p. So now I write q. Let me take rational functions, Laurent series, x to the p, to have a field basis of formal power series solutions. So you don't even need algebraicity here of formal power series solutions. Okay. So, of course, if you have a basis of algebraic power series characteristic zero, you get it in characteristic P. So here for almost all primes P. Now, this is actually uh, maybe elegant, but you can require much more if or and only if and only if now these power series here will be automatically algebraic because they should be induced from the ones above but you can even assume more if and only if LPY equals zero has and now you go to rational functions no longer Laurent series has a QXP basis. So here rational functions in XP of polynomial solutions. For almost all P. That's a little bit surprising that you can even assume to have a basis of polynomial solutions. Now, if you look in the literature, and I will give you a list of references in the notes, then this second condition is often not formulated exactly because people don't say whether it is a basis over what. And secondly, they don't say what type. They just say if a differential equation has a, has a, power, has a basis of algebraic solutions, then this is equivalent to saying that modulo p, it has a basis of algebraic solutions for almost all p. But often it is not specified what is meant in characteristic p by algebraic solutions. Sometimes people also say polynomial solutions, but they don't say why this is the same as requiring formal power series solutions. Mm -hmm. Yes? Ah, yes, here. Yes, of course. Thank you. That's a, that's a typo by, by my typewriter. This is, of course, FP. Thank you, Raphael. FP. I hope you can read it here. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, what's the time? Yeah. So, I propose the following. Before we, we see examples of this in special cases, what we will do next time, I want to, to prove as a warm-up why here polynomial solutions occur. Yeah? Why you can even assume that the solutions are polynomial. And that's just commutative algebra, but it's, a, it's nice. So maybe I should mention here 
there's one paper which is really uh, very nice and, and highly quoted, which is by Taira Honda. And I think it says something like differential equations in characteristic P. So it's an expository paper explaining the work of cuts, so part of the work, part of the work of cuts. And it's very inspiring. And in particular, there is a proof why you can pass from formal power series in characteristic P to polynomial solutions. I will give a different proof. Uh, and uh, nevertheless, I, I recommend you to look at this paper. I, I can even put it on the website, then you can download it. Okay? Yeah. Any further questions or comments? I have to clean again. I think you have you memorized this, so I can now erase everything. <clears throat> so maybe I can I can make a personal comment. So <clears throat> we have something like ninety or five or or even more uh, people who registered to the course, and many of them look at the recording of the course, yeah? not live, but the recording which has the advantage that you can choose your time and you can also run it at higher speeds. But of course, for the, for the speaker, you never know whether the message you want to distribute arrives at the people. So those who watch the course uh, a posteriori, so the recordings, I would be grateful to get a little bit of, of feedback just to know if they really watch it or if it is completely redundant. So on the, on the YouTube channel, you see how many clicks uh, there have been, but of course, all this is anonymous. And uh, so it would be nice to have a little bit of, of feedback. So let me now formulate this, this statement and uh, prove it, and then we will have a break. So let me. It says the following, K is built of characteristic P positive, L, I think I directly take the polynomial coefficient, L, the first operator. And now we assume that we already have a power series solution. So y in k is the power series solution of Ly equal to 0. Now we take a, a number. So I don't write p here because I have already assumed that my field is characteristic p. I have no reduction. I'm just working characteristic p. Let c be in n, some number, then there exists a polynomial z in kx. Degree can be high, but it will coincide with y up to degree c, z minus y of order so the first C coefficients of Z and Y coincide. So Z is, a, is an approximation. Of Y with respect to the hermetic topology in KX. Hermetic topology is given by the powers of X. And this polynomial z will be a solution 
of L1, which is also a solution of L1 equal zero. So not only that we have a polynomial solution, we can choose our polynomial solution as close to y as we want. Okay. So <clears throat> the corollary is the following. If you look now at the dimension of the solution spaces and you take them inside kx of L, let me just formulate it like this the vector space over <coughs> the, the dimension of this one is the same as the dimension of the solution space in Kx of L. Now, of course, when you talk of dimension, here you take it over K to have a field, maybe we take Laurent series, and here over k. Very good. Now, I think I make the break here because it's already time. So we can think a little bit about this. Uh, so maybe at least a remark. <clears throat> that to start the proof afterwards, if we take kx, then we have inside power series in x to the p. So this ring will be a kxp module, and <clears throat> and it will be a finite rank. Kxp module and Kx is a finite free Kxp module with basis, the canonical monomial basis will be one x, x square up to xp minus 1. Okay. So this means that you can write any power series uniquely. So if you have h of x, can be written uniquely h i of x p x i i equals 0 to p minus 1. And this is, of course, the heart of the proof of this lemma. But for this, we will take a five-minute break, and we will be back again. OK, we are back again, and let's do the proof. So I would like to give you two proofs, which are uh, identical, but the one is a kind of quick proof, which would be typical for commutative algebra. But then I think it is worthwhile to give also the details of this quick proof. So sketchy proof. Sketchy version. So I already said that this is a finite free kx model better than so of rank p. So what do you do? You write let y be a solution, y of x. And now I write it as before, yi x to the p x to the i, i from 0 
פי מינוס, אמרו פי מינוס 1, this y i some power series b a solution of l y equals 0. I'm not sure if you can read well my, my pen. I will change to the next color. Let's see if this works better. OK. Then, now I can apply L. Then L of y of x. And I write the variable in order to indicate that I write y of x in order to indicate that it is this specific series. Now, as I said before, these coefficients go outside. So we have some i from 0 to p minus 1, y i x to the p, l of x i. OK? And this is 0. So we see here, as l has polynomial coefficients, these here are polynomials. These here are power series. So the yi x to the p will give us a power series relation between polynomials. OK? Yeah. So hence, let me write it down, yi x p i from 0 to p minus 1 will be a k x p linear relation although this one is out of shape a k x p linear relation between l x i okay now by flatness of kx over kx, there exist <coughs> polynomials that I in kx approximating yi of yi up to prescribed degree giving again a relation such that if you now take some zi x to the p l x i i from 0 to p minus 1 is 0. So you can replace the yi's by the zi's, which are polynomials. And then you define z of x as the sum zi x to the i, x to the p x i, i from 0 to p minus 1. And this approximates approximates y of x and is a solution and is a polynomial solution of ly equals 0. So this was a sketchy version. I'm not sure if you're happy with this because we have inside here the concept of flatness, which is a standard tool in commutative algebra. But I guess that not everybody is so familiar with flatness. So if you don't mind, I give you now the detailed proof. But I'm still looking for a better pen, because that's a little bit annoying. So who wants that I skip the detailed proof? <clears throat> It's a little bit computational, but it gives you 
a feeling about the concept of flatness, which is in algebraic geometry one of the ingredients to study fibers of morphisms and flat morphisms. So if you don't mind, I will make a short excursion to this topic. B detailed version. Because this is a technique which is useful in general. So I will write now this LXI as polynomials with coefficients. So let me just check. Write L of xi as a sum aij x to the j, aij in k, finite. Yeah. Finite sum because everything is polynomial. And then using this equation, we get a, a system, we get a system of equations which looks like the following <coughs> yi x to the p times a i j sorry sorry i want to write them no 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 that's not not good sorry here you have to add x to the p and you take j from 0 to p minus 1 you also expand the polynomials and these are now polynomials in x sorry <coughs> and so that's why you get here x to the p equals 0. So this is given by comparison of coefficients. Now for each j, you can take the equation resulting from this equation, and you get j equals 0 to p minus 1, your system of equations. Now, this one is, of course, equivalent to saying that y i x a i j x is 0. Now, again, these here are polynomials, and these here are power series. Okay. And uh, now the flatness tells you the following. Flatness of kx, and this is independent of the field over kx. This is one possible definition of flatness, and you will see that it is very natural. Maybe I formulate it uh, ab abstractly. So if f1 up to fm in kx, then we can look. <coughs> at the module of linear relations between f1 up to fm. So let me write this rel kx f1 up to fm. So these are vectors r in kxm, m components, such that some ri fi. The module of linear relations between f1 up to fm, taken in kx. And you can do the same with relations in power series. So this is r, now power series, a vector of power series, some ri fi equals 0. And the flatness is the following in this context. So, of course, every polynomial linear relation will be, in particular, power series relation. But the flatness tells you that every formal power series relation is actually a linear combination 
of polynomial relations. So flatness means, let me call this here m and this m hat for completion. Then the flatness of the power ring over the polynomials is equivalent to saying that m hat is just kx power series times m. So any formal relation is a linear combination of a polynomial relation. Okay. And when you apply this here, you get precisely what you want. So that's what I did in the sketch. Yeah, that you can now take these yi and you can write them <coughs> as a linear combination of polynomial relations. And then you get your zi. Okay. So usually flatness is expressed through the exactness of the functor of tensorizing with the respective module or ring. But in down-to-earth terms, it is just this condition. So this is what is used for the lemma. So I let you finish here the details, but everything is here. OK. Yes, that's what I'm, this is the, the property, and I'm not going to prove it, but that's a, a standard fact about completion. So what you do is you first you localize in the ideal X to get a local ring, and then you take the completion, or you take directly the completion of this polynomial ring with respect to the ideal generated by X. And by general nonsense, you get this property. It's in Atiyah, McDonald, or Nagata, and all these commutative algebra books. It's not very difficult to prove. Yeah, it is just a, a property of limits, okay, or of completion. It will, I will give you the details in the notes. So I, that's why I'm not going to, to talk about all small items which appear here. Okay. So we have a little bit of time left. So I would like to give you uh, the flavor of the Grotendieck P curvature conjecture. So what is a P curvature? Huh? P curvature. And I will give you an equivalent condition which will allow us to, to, give a, to find a more concrete formulation. So let now L B in F P X del. Now we are, you could take any field of characteristic P, but let's just take F P as the coefficients. Then you can do the following. So this is a ring. You can, of course, you can multiply uh, differential operators. It's just the composition of the derivation, but it's not commutative. Okay? So if you take a certain operator, you can, in particular, you have a kind of Euclidean division by Euclidean non-commutative division. By this, I mean you have to take care if you take the right division or the left division, right? You divide the P's derivative, del P, write it as M times L plus the remainder. Okay. So all these are differential operators. Uh, and what is the remainder condition? With the order of N, which is the remainder less than the order of L. Okay. There's an algorithm which is completely analogous to the Euclidean division for usual polynomials. 
so here you divide from the right with, by L, OK? So this N is already the P curvature. Yeah. Then the remainder N, which is unique, as always, by in Euclidean division, is called the P curvature. of L. Now this is, of course, a, a definition which does not give you any insight. Yeah? But I will immediately give you a characterization when this p curvature is 0. This is an interesting case. So the proposition, which is due to Pierre Cartier, I think 1971 or something like this. It tells you, it gives you a criterion when the p curvature is 0. L has 0 p curvature if and only if Ly equals 0 has a fp x to the power p basis of power series solutions. So we are not acquainted yet what are the solutions of a differential equation in characteristic p. I will not have time to talk about this today. I will come back to the construction of solutions in characteristic p next time. but. This means that there are no logarithms in some sense. No logarithms appear. But of course, in characteristic P, we, we don't know really what the logarithm is. But let's accept it. Okay. And this is equivalent, again, by the lemma from before. Ly equals 0 has n f p rational functions basis of polynomial solutions. OK. So the second equivalence was the lemma. The <coughs> p curvature gives the name to the conjecture, but this condition is the one which I mentioned when I formulated the conjecture before. OK. So this is <clears throat> not very difficult to prove. I hope that we can do it next time. So this is very concrete here, whereas to compute this n, not so clear. OK, so I could. There is also a formulation of the p curvature when you pass to the system. I'm not sure if I want to. To give this now, da, da, dee, da, dum. let me think a little bit. Now let me first write the proposition, and then I will express the condition of the p curvature in terms of systems of first order differential equations. So, uh, one, another proposition which tells you a little bit what's going on is the following. If now, now you can define the p curvature also of a differential operator in characteristic 0. If L in qx del has mod p, p curvature equals 0 for almost all primes p, then, now, then something nice happens. So remember, in characteristic 0, in order to construct the solutions of our L, y equals 0, 
we looked at the indicial polynomial chi, and we looked at the roots of chi. So let me write this here as a reminder. So L, we had this chi, the indicial polynomial. And then we had rho in omega, the roots of this indicial polynomial, which were called the local exponents. And the solutions typically looked like x to the rho, h of x, and maybe a logarithm where h of x was a power series. So in the solutions, we had these rows, and these rows were in the algebraic closure of our field of definition. Now, if rho would be, for instance, a complex number, then uh, we are far off from algebraic solutions. So here, it says, the uh, proposition says, then uh, all local exponents of L at 0 are rational numbers. Numbers and simple roots of L. So this is, this is good news because this implies that already in characteristic 0, we have y of x will be now equal. So here we could write uh, uh, p divided. No, p is not good. But shall I take as a rational number, e divided by b maybe? a divided by b, a rational number, and then we have a power series and no logarithm, a, b in z, and h in q. We, I take everything formal, OK? So this is already a little bit closer to being algebraic, because the, the term, the monomial x to the power a divided by b, this itself is algebraic, of course, because it's b's power is x to the a. So the algebraicity is just in this formal power series here. Okay. So that's also nice. And to conclude for today, let me give you the a definition of the p curvature when you pass to the system. So I have not talked. I have not talked about systems up to now. Instead of take, looking at differential operators L and the scalar equation L y equals zero, you can rewrite this as you learned in in your elementary differential equations class as a system. L in K X del L Y equals zero nth order. And now I call it scalar equation because we have just one equation. And then Y is one variable. Now we introduce a capital variable which will place the role of Y, Y prime up to Y n minus 1. And then we will get a system. If we take now the derivative of this vector, I write it vertically. So this is a column vector, a of x times. And a is now a matrix, an n by n matrix, and the coefficients, let's say, rational functions. OK. This is now the system. So A will also be denoted A sub L. And this is called the companion matrix of L. So you go from L to a system of first order. This is a system of first order equations. 
And it can be proven that this is no loss of information. So the remark is, this is an equivalent formulation, which means that whenever you have such a system, can go back. Can go back from the system to scalar equation. I'm not going to do this today. Okay. So this AL, if if L is a n x del n down to a zero, then a L will have the following shape. You have it's an n by n matrix. You have zeros on the diagonal. Uh, it is like this. Here you have ones in the second diagonal. And here you have b0 in the last row up to bn minus 1. And the bi's are just minus ai divided by an. So you divide by the leading coefficients. This is a companion matrix. And what you can do is <coughs> you can take this equation and you can derive further further differentiation so you could think of yk equal now you get something which i call maybe aky by iterated substitution and then uh, if you take this modulo, if you take now k equals p <coughs> for k equal p and taking everything mod p, we get now the p curvature will now be a matrix. We get a p as the p curvature of L or of A. And I can give you a, <clears throat> the way it can be defined recursively, uh, A1, for some reason you have to take minus A, which is minus AL, and then you define AK plus 1, I will come back to this next time. You derive the preceding one, and you subtract the product of A and AK. And then you go up, up to K equals P, and you take modulo P. So it is kind of a funny recursion. These are matrices with polynomial or rational entries. So you derive, and then you also multiply matrices. And it turns out that this P curvature carries the same information as the p curvature I defined here. And the vanishing is also, of course, equivalent. Yeah. So sometimes it is more convenient to work with the matrices. Sometimes it is more convenient to work with the differential operators. Okay. And then one can look at examples where these p curvatures vanish and study whether, whether you really have algebraic solutions or not. So I will give you a couple of examples next time uh, to show you that now there will number theory popping up and there will be other ingredients. Uh, I will give you a take home, uh, not message, but <clears throat> as an appetizer, solve y prime equals y in positive characteristic. Yeah. So the exponential function makes no sense in positive characteristic. And the question is, is there some replacement, some refinement, some more sophisticated version of the exponential function in characteristic p where you get this solution? OK. I think I stop here for today. So I did not. I did not come to the normal form theorem as I expected. I will 
do this next time. In particular, I will answer this question here. And then we will see more details on all this stuff. So this is kind of a summary what will expect us in the next few le lessons until Christmas. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening, afternoon, or morning, whatever it is. And I hope to meet you again. By the way, we are preparing uh, solutions to the exercises. So this will be also then on the site, on the website, but it will take a little bit of time. OK. See you next time. Bye bye. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. So, um, in, uh, you, so we have two definitions of uh, the simulator, uh, even for uh, for uh, uh, the control operator. Yes. Uh, I do agree that um, when uh, when the, the the rest of uh, the open plane division uh, of the DP by L is equal to zero, uh, then the matrix of the simulator uh, is also uh, Yes. Uh, but when this is not the case, uh, can we really cover all the information about the matrix with just the rest of the equilibrium division? So what you say is, can you relate these two objects to each other? Yeah. I think so, but I don't know how. Yeah. Uh, this would be interesting. Yeah, Yes. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah, I would be, I mean, you could, you would have to rewrite this maybe as a system, but I would be curious to see this. So at least the direction you mentioned, please send me a reference, or maybe you write it down, and then I can include it. Yeah? Very interesting. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. OK. Bye-bye.